Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it and today's video is going to be about heroes. Now primarily for the last few years I have been talking mostly about the Bible and not much about anything else and today is going to be a little different. I mean obviously the Bible speaks of heroes but this, this video is going to be about the real heroes that we run into every day in real life. Now in the Bible Jesus was always getting abused by the the upper echelon of civilization and so he was constantly being confronted by uh, the religious leaders you know he lived in Jerusalem in the first century and the Pharisees kind of had a hold on everything they were pretty much at the top of the list when it comes to civilization's leaders but in a couple of instances, it says that the Pharisees approached Jesus with the Herodians. And that word Herodians simply means hero worshippers, or those who are dedicated to the heroes. The man who was in charge of Jerusalem at that time was called Herod, and Herod actually is formed from the word hero. So uh, this is not a new concept of having certain people that we look up to and, and we think highly of. That's basically what a hero is. So, anyway, I got to look in. Oh, and by the way, those are the people that killed Jesus. <laughs> so, it's not that they're without sin. It's just that they're, per they're perceived as being without sin by a lot of peepers, people. Now, in our day, I think anyone who maintains or sustains civilization would be a hero to those who depend on civilization for their lives. So I did a little bit of research. I just typed into a search box, top 10 most dangerous jobs in America. And uh, pretty much the, the things I'm going to tell you are things you already knew. So one of the things that's on the list is roofers. You know, roofers fall off of roofs all the time, and a lot of time they get up and walk away from it because, you know, you, you roll down and you got an 8-foot drop, and an 8-foot drop will kill somebody like me. But in general, guys like me are not going to be on a roof because we, I can't even climb a ladder, so it would be impossible for me to strip all the shingles off a roof. But uh, another one on the list is trash collectors. And uh, I think, you know, I don't, I don't know of any stories of trash collectors being killed on the job, but, I mean, those machines are driving, you know, these 30-ton machines that are, are going down the road with people hanging on the sides of them, jumping off and picking up trash or picking up recycle bins. And, uh, and not only that, I mean, just driving is dangerous anyway, so they have to do that. <coughs> <coughs> but the machines that, that actually even that process the garbage, you know, some of them have claws that come out and grab things and shake it, and then they have these big arms in the front that shake dumpsters and... And I'm sure that there are people that have been caught up in, the mechan in those mechanisms and have died from that. So, yeah, that's obviously something that would be dangerous. Factory workers. And, and these two that I'm about to read to you, the top two most dangerous jobs in the country, and I think both of these have actually got reality TV shows about them because a job is so dangerous, that's fishermen and loggers. And that's obvious. I mean... There are a lot, you can go on the internet and type in loggers being killed and there's probably a bunch of videos of loggers having trees fall on them or getting cut with a chainsaw or falling out of a tree and that's very dangerous. Uh, fisher, fishermen, you know most fishermen are in waters that are you know, on ships and the waters would be da dangerous. They're icy cold or they're, they have huge waves and then once again you've got the machinery that lays out the nets and pulls the nets in. And I'm sure there are people who have been killed by those things. But that's the top. Logger is actually the top most dangerous job in the country. Uh, miners are on there. And then there's even just other things like cab drivers. But uh, if we think about it, a whole lot of the deaths that are attributed to things like logging and fishing could be mitigated with just a few simple steps. I mean, if a logger, it, you know, a logger's not going to be killed if no chainsaws are running and no trees are falling. In general, somebody somewhere has to start a chainsaw or they have to cut down a tree or something. Something dangerous has to be going on. They're not just going to be killed because they're in the forest. Uh, anyway, 
if a logger, if every logger in the country were simply to wear a sidearm, you know, and it wouldn't have to be much, just a simple 9mm pistol, whatever, and uh, you see somebody cutting a tree down, and you're standing close enough that that tree could fall on you. You you just draw and shoot the guy that's cutting the tree down. I mean, I, that's obviously something we could do. But the reason nobody does that is because that's called murder. And you go to jail for it and nobody wants to go to jail. Now, what the, the law will allow, if you see someone cutting a tree down, you know, you can do this. Get out of the way. You know, if the tree's coming down quick, you may have to do this. But they allow that. They allow you to get out of the way of a tree that's falling down. Don't allow you to shoot somebody because they're cutting a tree down. Same thing with fishing. You know, obviously, if you're out there fishing, there's going to be a lot less deaths on, in clear water than there are in storms. So if you're, you've got a captain and he just demands that you work in a storm because of his, you know, how much money, profit he's going to make, uh, you could kill the captain. Somebody there will know how to take over. And if they see you kill the captain, very good chance they're not going to make you work in bad weather, right? So, once again, 9 millimeter strapped to your side. Always keep it handy. Captain wants to go into a storm. Shoot him. But once again, you can't do that. You know, they, they just don't allow people to protect themselves. In most instances... Now there's one, and here's another thing that makes me believe that this is a good plan. Because there is one job that is very, very safe. In this country, if you're scared of dying, you know, you don't want to do something dangerous. Uh, I went on the top 100 most dangerous jobs in America, and one of them on there is a policeman. In fact, you, you, at policeman, soldier, fireman, all of that stuff is way, way, way down on the list. So these are people that have a relatively safe job. I guess in America people think they have dangerous jobs because when a garbage man gets killed, you know, all you're going to see is his obituary and normally it'll tell you about his kids. It ain't going to tell you about how he died. But if a fireman gets killed, that's big news and there's all the details, there's interviews, there's photographs, all of that kind of stuff. And so people get it in their heads that firemen die and fishermen don't. Well, one of the things that makes me think that perhaps being given to permission to kill everybody that you feel endangered by can make your job safer because cops, if they feel that somebody's dangerous, they can kill them and it's not, they're not going to be held accountable for it. A while back I was watching a video and these kind of things really, really upset me because when you give a man power like that, <clears throat> even if he's a good man, you know, there's always a risk that he's going to, you know, shoot somebody um, who didn't deserve to die. Because there are people out here in this world that are very, very sad and they're too scared to put a gun to their head. But for some reason, it just seems to them to be easier to get somebody else to put a gun to your head. So every day, there are guys who will point a toy gun at a cop. And they they doing that because they just are tired of living. So they're going to... That's called suicide by cop. And obviously, when somebody does that, you cannot hold the poor policeman, you know, accountable for that because uh, you're not there. You know, maybe, you know, you think, well, maybe he could see that it wasn't a real gun because, you know, toy guns have an orange thing on the end. In fact, that's a law that if you sell toy guns, they have to have an orange tip so that if police see it, they know it's not a real gun. But most people who commit suicide by a cop are smart enough to pull that thing off or paint it black or something. And so, you know, honestly, if I was out there, you know, even if I'm standing here and I, if I had a gun on me, then uh, if I saw somebody coming towards me with a gun, you know, I'm a really good person. But if I really think that they have a gun and they're coming towards me and they have the intention of shooting me, you know, I'm not talking about a hunter that just happens to walk past while I'm out here in these woods. I'm talking about somebody coming at me just like this. I'll shoot them. I, and I don't think it'll even bother me. I mean, I don't like, I don't, it's like anything else that you have to do that you don't want to do. I probably lose sleep over it for a couple of weeks, you know, maybe just a couple of days. I don't know, but probably a couple of weeks I can get back to my life. And that's basically what I hear these, these police officers have to do too. You know, once they shoot somebody, they, they automatically put them on administrative leave. And sometimes it's for the, 
reputation of the department, but other times it's because the person who does the shooting can't function after that. But there are other cases where it is just so obvious, and now that the police, you know, the police carry cameras to protect themselves, so, because every day a cop will go out and just give somebody a speeding ticket, and the next thing you know, there's a lawyer at the police station suing for, you know, battery or something. This cop beat this, my client up. And so the police carry cameras so that in case they give someone a speeding ticket and their lawyer shows up, they can say, well, it doesn't look, here's a video, you know, right here. And according to this video, he didn't, he didn't touch him. So, yeah, that's a good idea. But uh, because these police officers carry these cameras, somebody somewhere lawyered up a, a law that all of that is public domain. And somehow they have to release the, that footage if some kind of an incident occurs. So, and the reason being is that you can't have cops going around videotaping people pr to protect themselves unless you're willing to authorize that camera to protect that person as well. Because if it only protects you, it's a weapon. You know, they don't want that camera to per be perceived as a weapon. They want it to be perceived as a safety device. So now we're hip to things that our parents were not hip to. You would see something in the news about some da dangerous criminal being killed by the cops, and you just had to accept that that was a dangerous criminal being killed by the cops. And even if it didn't make sense, you know, somebody was on their way to work, and they never made it to work because a cop killed him, and the cop says, well, he, he threatened me, he pulled a gun on me, you know, he was high on crystal meth. So, you know, you, and you go home like, that doesn't make sense. But without video, there's not much you can do. Well, recently I was watching some videos on the internet, and there was a video of a man going up to a car and killing a man. There's a cop. He goes up to a car, and he just kills a man. And uh, the story behind it was that, that he, this police officer, well, basically the story was he just decided he felt like killing somebody that day. So he goes up to a car, and he kills a guy. Now, when he was brought to trial, and it's obvious from the video that there was no reason for this incident to take place. It was just a typical traffic stop, a man and, his, uh, and a woman and a child in the car. And uh, the man was a, what you call a concealed weapon car permit carrier. See, I, I'm one of those, and I don't know what they call it, like CCP, I think, or something like that. But it's just a little card, and it ain't mo it's just like a business card. And it says on there, you know, con concealed weapon permit number 683421, and it's got your photo, you know, photograph there, and your, I guess your, per all the information that's pertinent to you. And they actually tell you when you get it to, if you, you know, if you're pulled over by the police, to show that to them. And, and that way the policeman can know, okay, th that way if he sees a gun in your car, which is, uh, which is legal, in most places it's even legal if you don't have a CCP, but... If you if she sees a gun in a car, he knows that you're like an honest citizen that's following all the rules for, for how to handle a weapon. You know, you've got the, the legal right to do that. So this man followed all the rules. He said, hello, officer, this is my driver's license, and I, I do have a concealed weapon permit. The cop says, do you have your gun with you? And he said, yes. Cop pulls the pulls gun out and kills a man. Now in court, this was the story. Cop says, the man told me he was armed, and I could smell the, the, the smell of marijuana, and I feared for my life, because, you know, everybody knows if somebody smokes marijuana and they ha they're close to a gun, they're murderers. They're going to kill you. There's no way around it. The only way to stop somebody smoking weed from committing murder is to kill them. And uh, the jury said, you know, that sounds reasonable to us. <laughs> you know, let's let him off. And I think there's, like, some kind of a rule that... If you're a cop and you're on trial for murder, you're not allowed to be in the jury unless you're a Republican and you did vote. You know, you can't just be a guy that's kind of on the fence. You've got to be one of those people that thinks that cops are heroes. So, uh, anyway, that was pretty upsetting to me when I saw that. But this week, I saw another video, and it was one of the most absolutely obvious evil videos I have ever seen in my life. Uh, some people at a hotel saw a man with a rifle. It was a, a pellet gun. A pellet gun is like what you give your kids for Christmas when they're 
12 years old or something, if they're boys, you know, girls get something else. Most girls, most girls don't want a pellet rifle. But anyways, he was in a hotel room, and his rifle had a scope, and apparently there's a, a group of friends, they're there for some kind of business thing or whatever, and uh, the man's saying, well, at my business, we have birds that get in, and they, they stay in the store for, for days, and they're pooping all over my products, and so I had to get a pellet rifle to get the birds out. There's no other way to get them out. And so he's showing it to a guy, and in the course of that, somebody that's in the room takes a gun and looks through the scope just to see how it looks. That's, and that was the whole story, that there was somebody looking through the scope of a rifle, a BB gun, pellet rifle. So the cops go in, <coughs> and there's a man there. I think he's like 26, 27 years old, married, got kids. And uh, in the video, what you see, uh, as these cops get up here, they get a man down on his knees, and the man's... I guess it starts off, he's just, he's down, obviously unable to do anything to defend himself, and, the, and this policeman is hollering at him, and he's like, lay down on your belly, cross your legs over, I didn't say to lay down on your belly, I said to cross, I told you to get up on your knees, put your hands behind your back, and the guy puts it, I told you to put your hands over your head, put your hands behind your back, if you do anything other than the instructions I give you, I will kill you. Which, and there's, there's no way, I don't care how sober you are, how smart you are, if you go back and watch this video, there's no way in the world you could follow the instruction this guy has given. This guy is just screaming these crazy instructions, threatening this guy, and look, I'm 55 years old, I've been in the military, I've seen this kind of behavior before. This is not a cop who's scared for his life. It's not someone who has the public safety in, on his mind. This is a psychopath that's getting his rocks off by making someone do silly things. When I was in the Navy, we had guys like that. In fact, uh, to some extent, almost everybody is like that. You know, we'd be in a room, there'd be a hundred of us. We're all buddies. We're all the same rank. And all of a sudden, some officer comes in and says, Hey, you, guess what? You just got increase in rank. And at that moment, that person turns into a monster. He's no longer your friend. You no longer can talk to him because it, from then on, he looks at you like a piece of dirt. And that, like I say, it's true of most people. Most people are going to have some... They, they somehow associate, associate themselves with Satan's hierarchy, you know, civilization's system of rulership. And that's actually a, a point of pride, you know. I'm a human being. I'm proud of my, my pretty forest. You know, this is something that I, you know, God did this, but I'm the one who keeps it clean. I'm the one that goes around and, you know, cuts down stick, sticker vines. Like this tree right here probably had four or five hundred vines in it that were killing it. So I pulled them down so that the tree could thrive. I'm proud of that. But if somebody came up and said, you know what, we're going to make you the king of everybody that takes care of trees, that would mean nothing to me. But human beings are rather foolish. We're like children, and most people when given that, suddenly look down on anybody else who cuts, or who protects trees. You know, you're not as, you're not me. You're subservient to me, so I don't like you anymore. You know, you're not, you don't have the same value you had to me before I got this great award. So, in the military, you've got some guys that as soon as they get a little bit of power, they're just vile. You know, they go so overboard with it, it's unreal. It's like it, they come up and they, they say, okay, go inspect your troops, and you got a dozen guys there. And one of those guys is the wrong color. You know, you're white, you like white people, he's black, so you're going to torture him. One guy is really, really not very bright. He's got a learning disability, and you don't like that, so you torture that guy. And in general, that is the way it works. If you ever are at a military inspection, all the people that they don't like fail inspection. All the people that they do like pass inspection has not because you know every guy like on the ship when they would say you have an inspection everybody bought new shoes everybody bought a new shirt bought a new t-shirt had their hair cut that day bought new pants so there's absolute you can't tell one from the other they look like like manufactured products and they'll go through and good job sailor you you're fa you're failed and you will not leave the ship for two days and I'll re you know, they do that. And it's really obvious that the only reason for that is because they like to pick on people. So you've got these psychopaths 
they'll go and just, if they don't like somebody, that guy gets forced to do humiliating things all day. So, you know, whereas everybody might be cleaning, this guy will be forced to clean with his toothbrush. You know, that just is more degrading than giving somebody regular cleaning equipment. And that's all this cop was. I mean, I've watched a video. This is a guy that was getting his rocks off by making this man kneel. Kneel to me. I am your God. You know, lay down in front of me. I am your God. If you do not obey my voice, I shall end your life. And the guy is told, well, he's told to pull his, you know, crawl to me with, with on his belly. You know, how many, I can't even do that. You know, if I'd have been there, he just had to shoot me because I could not crawl on my belly. I physically can't do it. This guy's trying and his pants are falling off. So he reached to pull his pants up and this cop shot him. And he didn't just shoot him with a pistol. He had an AK-47 because he, in, according to his own words, he thought he was going into a terrorist situation, you know, like the one that happened in Las Vegas. But this guy isn't barricaded in his room with 50 guns. It's just a guy out in the hall on his knees in, like, business clothes. And he's scared to death, and he's shaking, and he's saying, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Now, I have seen videos where cops are like, show us your hands. No, show us your hands. Obviously, the guy's turning around to reach in his pants, pull out a gun, and sure enough, he'll come around. When he gets about to here, he's dead. And that's reasonable. If I see somebody turning towards me with a gun in their hand, I'm going to kill them. If, I see, if I'm a police officer and I tell somebody to show me your hands and they refuse to even show me their hands, that's reasonable. But you don't take some poor fella and humiliate him for five minutes and then kill him just to do it. Now, probably you already know where this is going, if you've seen the video. This cop put five rounds of AK-47 into this fella. The first round killed him instantly. And that's the thing about most of these police videos. And it is training. The, tr the police are trained that when you start pulling the trigger, don't stop. Just keep killing them. You know, I think it's uh, two to the body mass. So, you know, because when you're shooting a gun, if you've never shot a gun, I'm going to tell you something. You really can't shoot at what, you're, what you want to, you know, unless you're some TV cowboy or something. Because, uh, and especially if you're scared. I've come out here when I wasn't scared and shot at stuff and couldn't hit it. But you're supposed to put two rounds into the mass of the body. Because even if you're a bad shot and you're close up, you're going to hit him somewhere. You know, maybe you aim for his stomach, you may hit him in the knee. But uh, they say two to the, to the body mass and one to the head. And I don't know why they've got that particular rule, but it does work, I'm sure. But you don't just kill an innocent man, period. And then after he's dead, put five more rounds into him to make sure that the, the EMTs can't save him. Because that's what you're doing. You're just making sure that he can't be revived. <clears throat> Once again, the man goes in, and he's put on trial, and he's found innocent. Not guilty. Now, he lost his job at the police department, but I'm sure that once he goes around telling people who he is, there will be police departments all around the country who are very, very happy to have him on board. Now, something else about this that I think is pretty grotesque. Um, I'm sure his car, if somewhere on it it says to serve and protect or something like that, some kind of stuff like that. And that should be, you know, if you're really going to put forth that image of being someone to, that's there to serve and protect, then that should be emblazoned on your uniform or whatever. This guy, I didn't really understand the story. I don't know if it was etched in his gun or the grip of his gun or if it was on his holster or on his gun belt, but he had the words, you're fucked on his police gear. Now... <clears throat> They, they only had him on trial for second-degree murder, which I think is ridiculous. This was first, obviously first-degree murder. But I do believe that had he put that man through that, and had he not killed him, he still should have done jail time. No police officer should be, have the right to torture and humiliate somebody for entertainment, and that is very obviously what was going on there. But now we're going to talk about heroes again, because this is important.
uh, and it hurts my feelings. I've got friends that I love very much, my, my you know, relatives I love very much. And I want to give them all the benefit of the doubt. But uh, when this happened, you know, people don't want to believe that they're heroes or not gods. Because that's basically, this guy is being a god. He's trying to force one of his, his worshipers to do ridiculous acts for his entertainment. And we all want to believe that, you know, not we all, but most people want to believe that there are people out there that we can trust when we're in trouble. And these are the people we call heroes. So I was talking to someone in my family, and this is really someone very close to me, and they said, well, it just goes to show you one thing. You shouldn't drink. Anytime you drink, you're going to get in trouble. And I'm like, that cop wasn't drinking. <laughs> He's the one that did. The other guy didn't do anything. All he was doing was spending time with his wife at a hotel, and he was murdered. That has nothing to do with drinking. I don't care if he... I watched uh, the, him trying to per, fulfill this this guy, uh, this police officer's disgusting fantasy, and I thought he was doing pretty daggum good. You know, I mean, I couldn't, I could not have followed that policeman's orders any better than this guy was following him. And yet he died. Obviously, he was not very drunk. But see, this person just cannot allow themselves to believe that the system is flawed. And I was talking to another friend that I love very much, and she said, well, you could see, you know, it looked like he was reaching for a gun. And I have watched, I knew that that excuse was going to come up, because that's the excuse they have to have. And there was nothing in the video that looked like a man reaching for a gun, his gun. It looked like a cop trying to make a man's pants come off. And when the man tried to keep his pants from coming off, the cop killed him because he was just so enraged that someone would not recognize his authority as a god. Basically, that's what a hero is. A hero is simply any false god. Now, we are already looking at this little list here of people that actually would be heroes if you consider, you know, who who is most risking their life to save the American way of life. It's how how long could a, this country exist if we did not have loggers or fishermen or trash collectors or roofers? These are people who absolutely have to be around in order for for society to continue on. And yet they're they're not because these people are not given permission to commit murder. And you know, this list doesn't take into consideration other things. Most loggers do not just spend their career logging in their yard. They have to get in a car and drive to work. Driving is an extremely dangerous endeavor, and people die from it every day, but people who dr die in their cars on their way to work don't get counted as work-related deaths. But in some of these instances, people driving to work do get counted as work-related deaths. When a policeman comes out of his house, quite a few policemen keep their cars at their house. A lot of policemen get killed on their way to work in their police car. That's a work-related death. So not only did policemen not make this list, but the cards were stacked in their favor to make the list because they get to count accidental deaths on their way to work as part of their job. Oh well. <clears throat> if you're one of those people out there that thinks that we should give special attention to firemen and soldiers and policemen and that they should be allowed to even commit murder as part of their job in order to ensure their safety as well as ours, I don't know how you ever found my channel. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.